Hello, welcome. My name is San. This is not going to be a reading today, unfortunately. I know a lot of you are waiting. I have been pulling cards every day. There's been no messages. The reason being, I think, is because I've been inspired to create this message to put this story out there and I got that push a little over a week ago and I feel like until this message gets published, everything else is on hold, right? It's like this is the priority. So um, what I'm going to do here today is tell you guys an incredibly personal, transformative story about what I've been going through the past few months and where I am now and what's next for me, for us, hopefully. So if you uh, don't have the time or the interest to sit and listen to me yammer for a half hour or so, you can just skip to maybe the last five minutes of the video just to see what's, what my plans are if you're interested. Otherwise, um, I'm going to let you guys all in on what I've been doing the last five months. Um, a few of you know, but not very many. So for the past five months, I have been participating in ayahuasca ceremonies. And anybody who doesn't know what ayahuasca is, I strongly encourage you to look it up. It's an incredibly powerful master plant medicine from the Amazon that you do in sacred ceremony in a circle led by an experienced shaman because it's incredibly powerful, incredibly powerful. They say it's like 10 years of therapy in one night and it, it absolutely is. It's like running a marathon. You get so much done in one ceremony. It's incredible. So I've done five now. I do, I've been doing one a month for the last five months and it's led me to this point now where it's time for me to bring it to you and maybe maybe you'll be interested in joining me on what's happening for me next, which has nothing to do with ayahuasca by the way. It's just where I'm going to take my work is like a bit of a shift. I'm going to continue doing the tarot readings, but I'm going to be adding something new and it's all come out of ayahuasca. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to tell you briefly the, the, the gems that I got out of each of the five ceremonies that have now kind of added up to this picture that's finally clicked into place for me. Okay. And I'm going to try to do it as quickly as I can. Okay. So ceremony one back on July 1st, uh, I went into the first ceremony just wanting to see more clearly, clearly who I am, like understand who I am, what my work is and you know, a bunch of stuff about my personal relationships, stuff like that. So the key things that came out of that ceremony for today's story is first of all, I kept being told over and over and over again to use my voice, which I found really confusing because I thought I already am using my voice. I do use my voice. I'm on YouTube. I deliver messages. It was an incredible um, obstacle for me to get over to when I first started my channel five years ago for exactly that reason, right? Like to put it yourself out there, to speak in front of a, a group, to, you know, all of that. And just personally in my life, I'm very open. I'm very honest. I'm very authentic. Like I feel like I do use my voice. I don't hold anything back. And so I didn't really understand that. I do now, but at the time I didn't understand what they meant by use your voice. And I should clarify at this point who they are. I'm not sure why I call it, I say they, when I talk about the plant medicine and the experience, I don't perceive any beings. What happens to me in ceremony generally is that I kind of receive, like I see visions. It's almost like having a dream. You see like a tableau playing out in front of you. Um, and I'm kind of having this dialogue with myself where I'm asking questions. I'm talking, like wondering, pondering. And every time I think something or question something, the answer is just there immediately. It's like a knowing. I don't hear a voice. There's no beings. It's just a knowing that comes, right? And in this last ceremony, number five, it was explained to me that that is me. It's just a higher aspect of me or it's my higher aspects. But for some reason, when I talk about it, I say they, okay? So... They kept saying to me, use your voice, use your voice. But the other thing that got addressed in that ceremony, if you've ever heard me in any of my readings talk about the fact that I don't believe I chose to be here. Every time I hear somebody say, well, you chose to incarnate, you chose to be here. My gut reaction is no, I didn't. I did not choose to be here. I am here against my will. I know this for sure. So in the ceremony, they told me that I did choose to be here. But we come here in phases and stages. I saw this with my daughter, okay? When she was really little, when she was like two months, six months, two years old, three years old, 
it was like more of her would just arrive all of a sudden is what it felt like to me. It's like she would change. The look in her eyes would be slightly different. She was more present, more, there was more of her there. It just felt like she was stepping in more and more in stages. And that's what I was being shown in ceremony that you come in in stages. And when I was about three years old, apparently, somebody said something to me and I didn't get to hear what it was, but it was just told, somebody said something to me and it made me change my mind about coming in. So I had chosen to come in, but then I changed my mind when I wasn't fully here yet. And so not only did that coming in or integration process kind of halt, but I almost feel like I took a step or two back, right? Um, and actually, interestingly, at that age, when I was three, I was hospitalized and almost didn't make it. So I think that that's the time. That's what was happening at that time. So it's like I, I only kind of have like one foot in this whole time, which makes a lot of sense for a lot of other things that I experience in my life. But so they also showed me they didn't show me like the future or what's going to happen. It was more of an abstract thing where I was just shown that. There's so much light. There's so much light coming into this realm and it's going to continue to come in and it's going to continue to come in. And at some point there's so much light that something incredible occurs. Although I, I couldn't see what that was. It was like, I would get right up to that threshold and then I couldn't see beyond it. So I was shown that or I experienced that actually. It was more like a visceral sensation that I felt all this light and then was asked again, do you want to be here? Do you want to step in fully? And so I said, yes, let's do it. And when I said yes, it's like all this energy started pouring into me from behind. It was coming into my body. It was light coming in and it was so intense and so incredible. I felt like I was going to explode. It's like, I couldn't hold it all. It's like, I was shaking. It's like my hands were glowing. It's like they were on fire, but it was like white, the golden light. It was like, it was, it was like pouring out of me. It was just so much light. And I was told that that was me. That was my own energy I was experiencing that was coming in finally, right? So that was ceremony one. Ceremony two and three we did together over a weekend, like they were back to back. So number two, I came in asking how I can be of service at this time. Um, and in that ceremony, the medicine, how I generally experience it is that was how it begins as it kind of moves up from my feet and up through my whole body. And it's really intense. It's almost like a freight train going over you, a freight train of like psychedelic fractaling patterns and energy. And it's immersive and it's intense and it can get overwhelming, right? If you're not really good at completely surrendering and allowing. Luckily, I'm really good at completely surrendering and allowing and I just let it wash through me, right? Um, and it's almost, it's like it's cleaning and cleansing and purging as it goes. And so, but once that was complete, then I was asked, would you do that for the collective? Will you allow us to use you as a channel to transmute energy for the collective? And I said, yes. And they said, even if it means sacrificing the rest of your ceremony to work for the collective. And I said, yes, absolutely. Like no hesitation, no doubt. So the, they started to work through me. They were, it was like the celebration. They were so happy that somebody was that they had found another vessel, another channel to do this work is how it felt, right? And it started with the people in the room. It's like I was moving all this energy on their behalf and my body was actually moving too, right? It was very physical. It was almost like doing a dance, right? For the people in the room. And then it expanded to all the people in my life that I knew. And then it expanded to the collective, like to all of humanity. It was incredible. And then I started seeing, like they would put an individual in front of me, somebody that I know, and when I would see them, I would like know their story. I would know everything that they're dealing with, every everything that they needed to know. Like I was receiving messages for them, like go and tell this person this, or oh, it makes so much sense. They're struggling with this because of this. Like all of this clarity about everybody they would put in front of me. A few of those people, when they got put in front of me, it's like I experienced everything they're experiencing. So if they're really suffering, or if they're really sad, or if they're really in despair, I would feel it, right? And just like emotion, like crying and just intense. When it would get intense like that, especially with all the mind stuff, it's like I would be almost like hearing their thoughts and their, their inner conflict and inner like conflicting thoughts basically is what it is. And I would notice suddenly my hands started to do this, this big kind of figure eight thing. And I wasn't doing it. It was just happening, right? I was allowing it. 
And every time my hands would start doing this motion, and a few of you might have seen me do this in a reading or two in the extended maybe, um, the energy would just dissipate. All of the, the weightedness would just go away and it would just dissolve. The whole story, all of the emotions would just dissolve back into stillness and peace. And it would happen over and over again. It was like the intensity would rise up again and then, and then this would happen and it would just bring it back to this calm place over and over and over like I was being trained, like I was being shown, taught this technique. And it worked every single time, right? And it was really beautiful. And then once that was completed, once the energy was still, then it was like this energy column would open above me and channel through me and then to the person. And it was like they were receiving what they desired. They were receiving what all of that chaos was birthing in them, right? Like it's, a lot of people don't really know what they want because they're so focused on the current situation, the current struggle. And they're not really seeing the gem at the center, at the core. And it's like clearing out all of that chaos to get to that gem and then say, here, look, this is, this is yours. And I was told that then these people were going to experience incredible transformation in their lives because of this process that I had done, right? And I have a hard time believing that because I'm like, okay, I'm in ceremony hours away from all of these people that I care about. And you're telling me that I can just do this and then do this and they receive or they will receive or their life will change. And they, they said, yes, that I didn't have to believe it, but I would soon believe it after seeing it enough times, I would be convinced. So I said, okay. Um, I left that ceremony with a ton of messages for everybody in my life. I spent the next week just giving messages to everybody in my life. A couple of them were incredibly transformative. Some of them were just like acknowledging somebody and saying, you, you've been seen, you've been seen. Some of them were really um, clear answers to things they've been struggling with for a long time. And some of them were incredibly profound, like uh, heart opening activations when I delivered the message, right? Like I could see the change in them. And I have seen some people change dramatically because of the, because of the messages that I delivered or because of the work that I had done on their behalf in ceremony. There was one particular person though that I received a lot of information for or about and when I brought it to them, they denied it and they said, that's not true. I don't know what you're talking about. And it was like, no, 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 no. So that really confused me. That and the fact that when I was being shown all these messages for all of these people, I was also kind of being told or coached in a way that this was, this was my work. This was what I was going to be doing now and that it was going to be incredibly hard to be such an open channel and to just receive everybody's stuff all the time. It was going to be overwhelming, kind of like Bruce Almighty when he starts to hear everybody's prayers and you have to be able to learn how to turn it off, how to have boundaries, all of that, just how to, how to navigate it. And coming out of ceremony into the next morning, it was incredibly challenging. Like usually the circle closes, everybody goes to sleep for a few hours and then we go into breakfast. But this time the ceremony closed and I couldn't go to sleep. It just wouldn't stop. Like there was another message and another message and another, and I kept saying, it needs to stop. I need to rest. I have to sleep. And it just never went away right into breakfast. Like even at breakfast, it was still on a little bit. In fact, I was kind of like, I didn't want to look at the people around me because if I did, it was like I would get all of their information and I felt like it was intrusive, like I was invading their privacy. So, but luckily it did fade with the medicine and it did go away. But I was confused about that because I thought that it was something that was going to stay with me and it didn't. So those two things in that ceremony were a bit confusing and challenging for me. Going into third ceremony the next night, I just asked to receive um, whatever was there, just be open to the experience. And what happened was this beautiful, it was almost like I was being thanked and loved for the work that I had done the night before. I was told, you did so much work last night. Tonight, your job is just to relax and receive and we're gonna love you. And it was just like I was in this cocoon of peace and tranquility like I'd never felt before. And I don't think I moved a muscle all night long. I was so still and at peace. And while I was in that state, it's like I got to see this show. It was so amazing. In the room that I was in, in the ceremony room I was in, that has like 
10 other or 11 other people participating in the medicine, then there's the shaman and then there's her helper. So all those people in the room, I could perceive them and their experiences. And then all of a sudden it was like the veil opened up, like, like a wall was moved aside and I got to see all the behind the scenes magic of what happens at ceremony and all the beings that are involved. And it was astounding and beautiful. So the shaman and her helper were like these physical representations of this divine feminine energy that was filling the space. It was like probably a dozen or so of these giant feminine figures, like the shaman say is this big and these, these other women were like two or three times her size, but kind of tiptoeing and delicate through the space, like playful and joyful and loving and coming up to each person on their mat and kind of scooping away anything they didn't need, like anything they were purging, anything that wasn't required anymore. And they would just kind of tuck it away really gently. It would just be gone. And then they would leave these gifts for them, like really unintrusively, gently, just leaving gifts at their bedside for them to discover in their own time, right? And they were so joyful in this process, just like children playing, right? And then outside of that, outside of the room, in a sense, was this big, strong circle of masculine energy, like these tall pillars of white, like these big white robes with hoods, and I couldn't see faces, but they were holding the space, like this big, strong, protective energy. That's all they did. They were just still and holding that space for the feminine energy that was inside, you know, doing all of the nurturing and all of the gifting. It was beautiful. So, and I feel like that was an important piece of the puzzle somehow that kind of seeing behind the scenes so after third ceremony i went home and was trying to integrate this is the thing about ayahuasca is everybody tells you that you need to integrate the experience that the ceremony itself is just the beginning it's just the door opening and you have to take all of that and bring it home and integrate it but i was kind of having a hard time with that because i wasn't sure what exactly i was integrating I didn't really feel like I had anything particular to work on for some reason I was guided to meditate more and I've been doing that a lot more but other than that I didn't really see how what I was given in ceremony was applying to my life or how to work it into my life so that was kind of a disconnect that I was experiencing I was also struggling with the idea of this one person that denied the message and the fact that I felt strongly like I was being shown a gift of mine to transmute energy and help people realize their desires. But then it kind of went away, right? I couldn't understand that. So, but interestingly, during that time, right before bed one night, I received an email from a subscriber. I had never heard from her before. It reminded me now looking back, it reminds me of right before I started Santero, what actually triggered me to start Santero was that my brother out of the blue messaged me one day and said, Hey, can you do a tarot reading for me? I really need some answers about this thing. And I, my first response was, I don't do readings. Call mom. She does readings, right? I was not a reader. I didn't do readings. I had a deck or two, but every time I used them, nothing really happened. I never really got anything out of it. And so I said, call mom. But a day or two after that, it's like it planted a seed. And so, at one point I said, oh, let's just see what happens. And so I, I spread the cards for him and there it was. It was like, there was a really powerful message right there. It was undeniable. It was like a movie playing out in front of me. And that's what started the channel because I was so astounded. And maybe it was the fact that I wasn't doing it for myself. Like this was the first time I think that somebody asked me to do a reading for them. And so I was, I came to the cards with that instead of for myself, and I still, to this day, I don't do cards for myself, ever, ever, ever. The cards are always for others, right? So, <clears throat> that started the channel. This email that came in right before I went to bed, this woman on the other side of the world, telling me this story about how she, her dog ran away. She was in the park with her dog, they go there regularly. She always has this kind of playtime off leash with the dog where the dog's running around in the park and everything's been fine, and then this day, Something spooked the dog and the dog bolted before she could realize it was just gone. And I think it had been a couple of days at that point. She had been looking everywhere for her dog, couldn't find her dog. And she was panicked and upset, obviously. And she said, I remember your story about your cat and how your cat got chased away. And then four months later, he came back. And so can you help me get my dog back? 
And I was like, my first reaction was, what am I, what am I supposed to do? How do I find a dog on the other side of the world? I don't even know how I found my cat really, except that I just never gave up on it, right? Um, and I had received a dream, a vision saying that he would come back. And so I believed, I like held on to that dream. Like I saw it in a dream and so it will be. Um, so I went to sleep that night right after getting that email and I had a dream about my old dog, Maggie. And it was like, I was still in the apartment that I lived in in Toronto with my sister. It was like the second and third floor of a, of a, a low rise and the bottom level was like restaurants and stores and stuff. And in the dream, we were up on the second floor and I was saying, we need to get outside out front to get Maggie. She's sitting out on the sidewalk. She doesn't have her leash. We got to leash her up before she takes off. That was the whole dream. And it's like, well, it doesn't mean anything to me right now. So maybe it's for her. And so in the morning I emailed her and I said, this is the dream that I got after reading your email. I don't know if it's significant or important in any way, but I just thought I would share it with you because I don't see how it applies to me. And I will take you and your energy into meditation with me. And so that's what I did. I went into meditation with her story, with her energy, with the dog's energy. And just like, what do I do? How do I help? Is there any information for this? And very quickly what came up was do the process. And I was like, what, this process? It was like, yeah, that it's like, we gave you a process, do the process. So I did, I sat with her energy and all the heavy weighted emotion and I started doing the thing with my hands, um, which I now think, I wonder if it has something to do with that kind of like hand glowing activation I received in my first ceremony because in meditation a lot now, it's like my hands get hot. So I did this in meditation and I broke up the energy and then I just kind of felt and rested in the, in the feeling of like almost like I was her is like what it feels like to put your eyes on that dog for the first time after they're gone and just the rush of emotion. This the interesting thing is I don't know if I was like creating that in my mind like I was imagining what I desired for her or if I was receiving that right that was that was me receiving kind of the answer or the new story on her behalf. So all of that, I did all of that. I felt that and uh, that reunion energy. And I can't remember if I ever emailed her to explain that to her. I just let it be. So, I mean, a good week or so went by. I had another friend come in, come up that was really needing help. And so I was trying to do the same process with her. I wasn't seeing anything moving. I wasn't sensing any shifts for them. And I was getting really discouraged. And so right before bed one night, I was saying like to the universe, why, I don't understand why is this being shown to me, this process, this person pops up in like the perfect timing seemingly um, to give me like a problem to work with, to see what I can do with it. And it, it's like, nothing is happening. Nothing's changing and I don't understand. And I'm really discouraged. So the very next morning I got an email from this woman, other side of the world. And she's like, my dog is back. My dog is back. And not only is she back, but she came back in exactly the way that you dreamed it. She was sitting on the sidewalk out front of the business that is downstairs or in front. I can't remember how she described it, but it's an interesting, similar setup where there's kind of a business. She lives in the back or above something like that. And the dog was out front of the business had found her way home. And I had suggested that to her the day that I emailed her about the dream. I said, how far away is this park? Because I have a feeling the dog may know how to get home and may just find her way home, right? So I think it had been at least a week that the dog came home. But the interesting thing was what else I received about that was that it wasn't just about her getting her dog back. It was actually about her feeling her own power. That was the true desire in the situation was yes to get her dog back to be reunited, reunited with her dog but mostly it was to feel empowered because when your dog disappears like that the number one thing you're feeling is disempowered like you're completely helpless there's nothing you can do so the opposite of that flip side of that is to feel very empowered and feel like you, there is something you can do and you can do it very effectively right so I think that that was actually the true desire that she received from that experience. It's almost like the dog just stepped out of her life briefly to bring her that. So anyway, that amazing experience happened. 
which I think is critical and important. I feel like it's very synchronistic that it came up, right? Like how unusual, nobody's ever asked me something like that before, ever. And just the timing of it was astounding. So, okay, back into fourth ceremony. I went into fourth ceremony intending to understand, I wanted discernment about this process, about how the medicine works, about what I'm receiving, because I was confused about why the one message that I delivered wasn't lining up and why the things I was being shown were not translating into my real life. And, and I wanted to know, is it just fantasy? Am I just having a, a, a very vibrant dream? Is this information real or true? Is it true sometimes and not other times? How do I know? I really wanted to know. So that whole ceremony, I was, it was like I was being given exercises in discernment. It was interesting. It was kind of like, I would be dropped into this amazing situation like, Sam, this is what is next for you, this exciting opportunity. And I'd be like, that is amazing. I want that. That would be spectacular. But then I would go, but wait a minute. But if I did that, in order to do that, I would have to like move or I'd have to leave this or I'd have to, you know, other things would have to be sacrificed or it would put this person in an uncomfortable situation. And then I would kind of go, Mm, something doesn't quite feel right about this. And once I got to that point, it would be like, ding, 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 passed the test. That was the discernment. The way you know discernment is if you were told something or shown something, does it feel true in all ways, right? It's like, or are there little points where it's not quite lining up or it doesn't benefit everybody? You know what I mean? So I was given this kind of lesson in discernment. That was for a ceremony. And interestingly, Right around that time, I think after between fourth and fifth ceremony, I discovered that the person that denied the messages that I tried to give them, they were just in denial. It's actually all of it was completely true and they just weren't willing to be vulnerable and admit things, right? It's like, it's like they just didn't want to accept it or they didn't want to receive it. But I know now for sure that everything that I was shown about that person was completely true and kind of a roundabout way since then they've come back to me and 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 almost like revealed it right anyway so that was true so that means all of the messages that i've delivered to everybody have been impactful i believe so anyway going into fifth ceremony 11 11 i again wanted to know how i could be of service at this time with an awakening collective a time of ascension what is my job how do i do it how do I take what I'm learning in ceremony and translate it into the real world? What do I do with it? And that's where I got all of these instructions on what I need to do next. And all of them are just like way out of my comfort zone, way out of my comfort zone, of course. So the very first thing was to make this video. What ayahuasca wanted me to tell you for this channel, that's difficult for me because then I have to tell you all about my ayahuasca journey and that's incredibly personal and the, you know there's there is still I believe people who are very judgmental of ayahuasca or they don't understand it and so there's all of that layering too like are people going to get it like why I'm doing this what it exactly is it's not doing drugs it's actually a, a, a plant medicine that's profound and sacred and long long history and incredible benefits so Where was I? Okay, so I had to make, make this video, what ayahuasca wanted me to tell you. Okay, ayahuasca wanted me to tell you a couple of things. First of all, that we've, something has changed. Something f foundational seems to have changed in like the structure of reality. Because this ceremony, the beginning of it, it's like that, that time that I got to see behind the scenes of ceremony and how it worked. This time I got to see kind of behind the scenes of reality and how it works. And it was like the walls being kind of this flat surface suddenly just turned and I could see through them to like behind the scenes. It was like backstage of reality. Um, and it was so profound and so out there that I, I didn't bring a lot of it back with me. But I don't think that that matters because I think that it's like the energy is with me now. There's something about, it's almost like I'm on the edge. It's like I'm one foot in each world, interestingly, because I was saying that earlier, um, with this kind of backstage thing where it's like before I was in the arena, I was, I was watching the show and now 
I'm kind of part of the crew, I think, or I have access to the crew who creates the reality. And it's almost like I'm a go-between, something like that. Like maybe I can receive guidance or message from the crew about how to inform this space, right? And that's part of the how it's coming in now about how to use my voice, right? <clears throat> So I got to see behind the scenes of reality. And when I saw that, I saw that there used to be, I believe, some sort of a an energy, a consciousness that was holding the reality really steady and firm, I guess is the best way to describe it. It was more difficult to shift or or move because there was like this buttressing energy holding the walls of reality in place. And that's all gone now. It's like, I don't know what happened, but it's like, I saw all of that energy is gone now. All this buttressing energy is gone. And it's like the, the templates or the whatever, the scenery is, it doesn't, you can't perceive that it's changed. It's still in place. But now if you tap on it just slightly, it's like it'll fall over. You'll see that nothing is really holding it up, that, that there's actually quite profound freedom there now that we're not aware of. It's like, it's like the lid was taken off and nobody's noticed yet. So there's that message for you guys. I also received this idea that something would be happening in ceremony and I can't remember the details of what it was, but something uncomfortable, something that I didn't like would begin happening. And I would say, I don't like this. And then the medicine would say, well, what do you, what say what you do want, say what you do want. And there's the thing with the voice, right? And so the moment I said what I preferred, I would experience it just because I said it. And sometimes I didn't actually have to use words. I just had to have the knowing or the feeling in my body of what I wanted and then just emit a sound, almost like a toning, just make a tone, a hum. And the moment that I hummed, everything would change and I would be in what I desired, right? So that was a key part of it as well. So I kind of, and then I started receiving all these visions about what to do with this, about the thing with the hands apparently is significant. It actually does something. It breaks up the energy, it transmutes energy. And then saying the thing that is preferred apparently makes it so. Again, I'm saying, I'm not sure it's that easy. I don't know if it works that way. And I'm told, try it and find out, right? So I don't know for sure. To me, it's all just a great big experiment, but I'm being encouraged to try it out. And so that's where I am here now saying to you guys, what I was shown and what I'm about to do is to create a new channel. I'm making a second channel where I'm going to be playing around with this, doing this work and seeing what happens. So there's, there's a few really important factors here. First of all, is the process that I was given the fact that I feel like reality has shifted somehow significantly, maybe very recently. And the fact that I seem to um, have a connection to something that is informing how I do this work. It's like, it's the energy that's moving through me, like channeling through me. But also the key aspect is you guys, because of the collective focus, right? Kind of like being a prayer circle. It's fascinating because my whole life I've been so fascinated with mass consciousness, collective consciousness. Like if you know my story and, and me wanting to be backstage and do work at big shows, it was because of that. It wasn't because I wanted to be near famous people or any of that stuff, although that's although that is fun as well. It was always about the collective focus and the fact that a lot of people focusing in a, in a present moment is, is potent and powerful, right? So there's that as well. So I was told to create another channel and this is where it gets crazy for me. First of all, because I don't know how to do this or what to do or what to expect, but it's like, I need to just open the floodgates to you guys to say, send me your stories, either through comment, through email, however you want to do it. If you want to tell me where you are, just a, a brief snapshot of what you're experiencing right now. And that's all you have to do. You don't even have to know what you prefer. You just have to tell me where you are. And I, I don't know how I'm going to do it. If I'm going to just focus on a few stories or as many as I possibly can, but, and, and how I'm going to do the process or what it's going to look like. 
if I'm going to do it on camera, if I'm just going to report what happened, I don't know. But at this point, I'm just going to ask you to, it's almost like a call for submission. Send me your story. Send me whatever you desire to send me. And at some point, I'm going to do something with it. I don't know how long it's going to take me to sort through it, to do whatever it needs, needs to be done, to figure out what needs to be done. But at some point, I will come back to you with the end product, I guess, right? And I don't know what that's gonna look like yet. Although I do feel like at some point it's going to shift into maybe doing lives. And this is another big discomfort for me is that like I've never, ever, ever wanted to do lives, but I feel like I'm gonna be doing lives with you guys because that's where the energy is with us all coming together, focusing on somebody's story and what they truly want and us all doing it together in that moment, like with this energy transmutation and all of that. And then just see what happens, right? Like, we don't know. Let's just be open. Let's experiment. Let's see. I have people kind of report back if anything shifted for them. And who knows where it's going to go, right? So I am just being willing to show up and do the work and allow the process. That's where I'm at now. So I'm going to put a link to the new channel in the description box. There's an email over there. Or like I said, you can leave, you can leave a comment if you're fine with it being on public display. If you want it to be private, you can email me. And we'll just see what we can do with it. And that's about it. Is that all I have to tell you guys? So basically, Ayahuasca wanted me to tell you that the energy has shifted. It's like we're in a new space, a new energy, and we're being given new tools and new opportunities to create powerful things together. And so that's the kind of the phase we're entering into now. Hopefully, we can see really profound things happening for us as a collective. So I hope you'll join me over there and thank you for sitting through this long, long story. Um, and I can't wait to hear what you guys have to say about this, right? Cause I have no idea. I'm just like, this is so kind of out there, right? Like I'm really putting myself out there to be like, I was given this strange process in a strange way and I'm going to see what happens. So I hope to see you over there. Thanks. Bye.